accessories are great, you know? You got shoes that allow for supersonic speeds, wings that grant the ability to fly, trinkets that enhance damage output. Hell, you could do it all. But what if we had none of that? I'm talking slower speeds than an old lady's driving, weak jumps that make us stay relatively grounded, and having to rely on our weapon's base damage output. It sounds horrible, doesn't it? So why not do all of that on Calamity Infernum? So here are all of the things, all of the ideas that I feel like doing, kind of. And I feel, uh, when I say I feel like doing, there's like two on there that I don't feel like doing right now. If it gets Zenith, I'm ending it all. Fuck! You may be wondering, chap, why did you put that on there if you didn't want to do it? Well, my dear viewer, while I was making the wheel, I realized there really weren't that many things on it, so to pad out the list, I had some dumb idea that I thought would be theoretically possible. And also keep in mind that I have no fucking clue on how any of the boss nor game mechanics work, so this whole challenge pretty much relies on a big stinking maybe. But I know my limits, I just want to see if I can get through at least free hard mode. I kind of fucked myself. Anyway, as per tradition, 75, 6, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, God! Fuck! It just had to be Slaughterhouse. Oh my god. It was gonna happen one way or another. I didn't really have much of a plan starting out. I figured since my mobility was very limited, I'd have to face tank some attacks, so having a high defense stat for melee armor would be pretty good. But I figured I'd use ranged weapons, because in my stupid delusional mind, I came to the conclusion that if I keep my distance at all times, my lack of mobility won't be that big of an issue. Spoiler alert, it is. So the rules of this challenge are pretty simple. Nothing is allowed to be placed in the slots of labels as accessories. However, anything that is purely cosmetic and has no real function is fair game, and is to be placed in the social slots. Items that go in the equipment slots are also allowed, as they aren't considered accessories. You aren't fighting me on this. And lastly, no cheese. Everything is possible regardless of the handicap with cheesing, which is why I banned it. So as every Terraria playthrough goes, I chop down some trees, construct a prison, go caving, die several times, and find some useless junk we don't need. The good thing about this challenge is that 90% of everything I get from chests is irrelevant, meaning I don't have to headbutt my monitor after getting my 7th cloud in a bottle instead of a single pair of Hermes boots. But the accessories are still good to have, so I can sell them off to buy a mini shark later on. Now the current goal was to get some decent armor, a hook for better vertical movement, and the aforementioned mini shark. And since I was already in a cave, I knocked out the first two pretty easily by getting an amethyst hook and a basically a full set of gold armor. I then headed to the crimson where I blow up a crimson heart to get a very shitty undertaker, but I didn't care for the worse than the musket which is still pretty shit, I only needed it so I could get the arms dealer to move in. So in the meantime I plunged into the underground desert for desert fossils to make fossil armor, as it has a really good range stats and has the same amount of defense points as gold armor. And after about 40ish minutes, I had quite a bit of fossils, and thanks to Calamity's reworked gold armor set bonus, I also racked up a good bit of gold as well, which I used to buy a mini shark. I then put all of my fossils into the extractinator and got enough sturdy fossils to craft the armor set I needed. I now felt pretty ready to take on my first boss, the Desert Scourge. I lied. I built a second layer to my arena and I still get folded. So instead I opted to get the Goblin Tinkerer so I could reforge my virgin mini shark into a- I'm not finishing that sentence. Fruit calms your nerves, may have unintended side effects. I would really like to know what that means, but you know, we're going to the wiki. We're going to the wiki. Oh my god, I'm a hot woman. Oh, but it's equivable, it's cheating. Damn it. You're right. No accessories means no accessories, regardless of use or not. Fuck you guys, I'm keeping this on. You're already a hot woman. I never want to hear you say that ever again. Oh yeah, that's right, it's my challenge. That's right, a challenge that We'll never see the day of light or the light of day because I'm not finishing this bullshit. <laughs> After I finished up the goblin army, I dove underground and found the goblin tinkerer. And for some fucking reason, I wanted to buy the workshop, even though I didn't fucking need it. And by the time I gathered enough items to sell, he died. So now I had to wait for him to spawn in. And now with my slightly buffed mini shark and a few buffs, I challenged the desert scourge. This is an attempt I will actually be sad if I lose. Let me get adrenaline! Motherfuck! Motherfuck, please! Ah, oh, that's my fault. That's all my fault. That's just all my fault. Oh, the flow is gone. The flow is gone. It's over. Oh, never mind. No, I win these. Wait, if I can do damage! It's over, yeah. <laughs> I threw- I- Nah, cutting it close for the content. Cutting it close for the content. Real, 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 real. And with that, we have killed our first boss. 
three hours into the stream. I then fought King Slime first try and got the Slimy Saddle, a mount that grants a high fall speed, which is great for dodging. I then made a Storm Surge out of the guts of my fallen enemy, and it was now time to take out the Eye of Cthulhu. I don't even know why I thought it would be funny to do true melee. There was no reason to. Nobody told me to. Nobody told me to do it. Everyone's been telling me, do Zenith, do get fixed boy calamity death mode and then i go ahead and do <laughs> do this stupid bullshit i'm never doing zenith in my life i would rather kill myself than do get fixed boy there's no reason for me to do get fixed boy I, 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 no, I think I'm getting folded here. Yep. And after dying one too many times, I came to the conclusion that my issue was speed. I already had a swiftness potion and the highest food buff I could attain. So what do I do? I mean, I could just keep trying to brute force my way through, but I've already been at this for an hour. Then I really want to dedicate more time to just a singular boss. Fuck no. But how could I even amount? However, there was just one problem with that. I had to fill out 30% of the bestiary. So after about an hour or so of running around and slaughtering everything in my path, still nothing. <laughs> Chat, don't tell anyone. Where the fuck is it? It's not that one. It's not that one. It's not that one. It. Where the fuck? Where the fuck? Where the fuck? Oh, it's right here. All right, Chad, don't tell anyone. The royal. All right, Chad, I didn't do that. Before you start telling me, oh, why don't you just zip it, lock it? Put it in your pocket. Anyway, the horse strat was working pretty well, except for when I had to turn around, and after a couple attempts, we finally got this run. And he's dead. Five hours for that. This guy's a shitter. This guy's so bad, bro. The next Greeble on my hit list was Krabulon, where all it took was just a few back and forths. Die, die, die. Oh my god. To the person who told me Krabulon would be a nightmare, you underestimate me. I'm better. I'm the goat. I have post notifications for Myra Terraria. I don't fuck around here, I say as I get my shit tossed by a giant cerebrum. After many attempts, I came to the conclusion that my issue was the mount. Don't get me wrong, the speed is great, but the fact that it takes so long to reach that speed is not ideal, especially when turning around and going up a platform. I mean, the latter is just entirely my fault. I made those fuckers extremely far apart, and going up a layer was not optimal to say the least, because I'd have to wait for the slow acceleration until someone in chat proposed a solution. Just add more layers, lol. Let's get it. Okay, you know, I think I win this. He is just standing still. Yep, alright. With the blood samples I got from the brain, I made a full set of Crimtain armor, and immediately continued my murder spree by challenging the perforator. Never mind. So after getting slammed again, I came to the conclusion that my defense was really not that good. So I made a Deathbringer pickaxe and began depleting hell of its natural resources to make a dapper set of molten armor. And you know where that got me? Six feet under. Dojack. That's the guy from the SMP. Hey Dojack, remember when you said... Remember when you told me that you're never gonna do another SMP ever again? and then you proceeded to make another SMP. I remember that, that was pretty funny. <laughs> Where did all that time go? What happened? It's crazy, I was like, I was 14 when that, when that server started. I'm eight, I'm a, I'm a big man now. I'm a big 18 year old now. That's weird to think about. 20? That's crazy, that's actually crazy. I was starting, I was starting high school when I made when when that server started. Yeah, no, it is a reunion because we don't talk anymore. <laughs> After that heart to heart, I got fucked several more times before calling it quits for the night, as I had been streaming for eight fucking hours. My strategy, my strategies for getting through perforators and the other guy, maybe Slime God, have came to me in a dream. And that dream was the the, the blade crest oath sword so upon spawning in i ran straight for the brimstone crag to find myself a blade crest oath sword which is probably the best pre hard mode sword excluding the fractured arc and with my shiny new blade i summoned the perforators oh 
Oh, Not cool, game! Oh, wait, I'm in this last phase, like, first try. I haven't even popped Rage at all. I'm throwing. I'm actually throwing. See, chat, I told you. I told you the Blade Crest Oath Sword was the, was the fucking move. As expected, the Oath Sword shredded the perforators, and we are now able to mine an Aerolite to make a broken biome blade. I then challenged Skeletron, who's usually annoying for me, but thankfully this fight didn't require too much movement, except for when it did. And he was taken care of in a couple of attempts. First try, baby. First try. First try, baby. First try. First fucking try. I now had access to the dungeon, but in our situation we didn't really need anything in there, as obviously we weren't allowed the Cobalt Shield, and we don't need the Muramasa as you can't craft a Knight's Edge until after Slime God, which doesn't really matter as you can just make the Fracture Arc. And I also never care about the Phoenix Blaster, so getting the handgun was out of the question. Which meant I had to use my current gear for Slime God, who proved to be a giant pain in my spine. They love to spew their... Dumb ass fucking projectiles. So much so that I did the old one's army to get a sentry for a tad bit of DPS, which actually worked out pretty good. Why am I getting nervous? <gasps> Why? I had that. Why was I getting nervous? The fuck? And now, it was time for Wall of Flesh. Oh man. This fight unironically took me about six hours to beat. And the extreme mental toll this took on me was far worse than anything that Ni194 times 2 could ever do to me. No! Which is why it pains me to say that the last two hours of the VOD were completely corrupted. And because I played two seconds of Bochi the Rock song on Osu after dying for the 50th time, Sony decided to block the VOD everywhere! Making so I can't download it at a crisp 1080p. So then I had to appeal the claim so the VOD could be briefly unblocked and downloaded by 4K video downloader. And to my surprise, Sony thought it would be very justified to vaporize a nine hour stream because of two whole seconds and give me a FUCKING COPYRIGHT STRIKE! This is the part where I lie to you by acting all mature and telling you that Sony had everything in their right to strike me down, and that I am actually in the wrong. BUT THIS GUY CAN UPLOAD A WHOLE FUCKING SONG, BUT I CAN'T EVEN HAVE A FEW SECONDS! I'm PLAYING FUCKING OSU! HOW THE HELL AM I INFRINGING YOUR COPYRIGHT?! However, that's an issue that doesn't manifest within the next 5 hours of the stream. So, let's get back to the present. My initial strat against this behemoth was to use a minecart. I mean, sure, the acceleration is really bad, but as long as I can stay at a far and safe distance, I could rain bullets until he die. If I go too far, I die. I could use the horse, but the acceleration was just as big of an issue here as every time a barrage of lasers were thrown, I'd have to re-accelerate which could not outspeed the wall. I mean, there's also on foot, but at a certain point, my walking speed couldn't keep up and I'd die. With my current lack of mobility knowledge, there really wasn't anything I could do. So I kept trying to brute force my way through with the horse, which is why after many hours of getting absolutely nowhere, someone in chat suggested getting the golf cart, which caused me to drop everything I was doing and start golfing. And after getting enough golf points, I bought the keys and in an attempt or two, everything started to click. This is the part where I show you the part in the VOD, but as I explained earlier, I don't have it. So this is all just recreated still that this fight is just as legit. If I choke this, I will be very sad. I don't think I should. Yeah, look how, look how low he is and look how much health I have. See, look. It was finally over. After almost 15 hours, I'd be in pretty hard mode Infernum without any accessories. It was like a crack high, but I needed more crack. I entered hard mode with a plan. First, I'd get my grubby mitts on an Uzi. <gasps> Yo, the Uzi! Second, kill Queen Slime for Crystal Assassin armor. Die already! Alright, she's dead. Sick. Third, actually, that's all I got. Usually, for me, Infernum Twins are just haha, funny eyeballs, can't hit a shot. But when I actually got around to them, 
Yeah, this is gonna be a problem. A problem that I'll face later because the destroyer is a lot easier and I'll have access to a mini shark after. I may have spoke too soon. But I redeemed myself by killing Skeletron Prime. He's a pushover, why am I proud of that? And because I'm nice and totally not lazy, I'll spare you all the minor details for the next three hours. Basically, I kept getting shit on by both bosses thinking, oh man, today's gonna be the day. No. Then someone in chat suggests minecarts for the twins, which wasn't actually a bad idea. Unfortunately, this is considered cheese, I guess, but there really wasn't anything else I could do. So we're like seven and one with cheese, so we up. However, it did take me a while to actually get a strategy down to where I could actually live their final phase. Because in Infernum, each twin has a different final phase depending on which one you kill first. Ranazer is out of question because I can't beat Toho 7 on normal, so how do you expect me to live this bullshit? And Spaz isn't much better either because he's fast as shit, so outrunning him, even with the golf cart, was just impossible. Which is why I set up a teleport. God damn it. Go at 60! Go at 60, guys! Let's fucking go! Let's freaking go, gang! Let's go! Let's get it! Let's get it! Yeah! I have a full inventory. I now had access to tier 3 ores, which I'd weld into a particle accelerator, which put the destroyer back in his place of being a joke. Oh my god, he looked me right in the eye! Oh wait, did I sell? No, never mind, I did it. Yeah! WHO ARE YOU?! Get the fuck out of- off of my screen, Drayton. Fuck you. With all the mechs defeated, I now had to deal with a giant weed. Calamity actually gives us a free arena for this fight, however, in our situation, it was too small. I then expanded with a city buster from Fargo's mutant mod, and same fate. I expanded the arena yet again, and- no! You know what? Fuck it. Bye on blade time. No, I Mid DPS, but I don't have to, like- Nah, no, it's like about the same. Yeah, that bow, honestly, piece of shit. Why was I using it for so long? Uh. Okay. Ah! Okay. <laughs> I almost got fucked. Yeah, no. Lame. I knew that pellet was gonna hit me too. Just that single little pellet. Friendliness pellet. That's gonna hit me. Wow, that did! I was fucking joking. Oh my god, that shaved off so much health. Oh, this is not a good spot to be in. You know? Wait, at least I have hook of dissonance. If I didn't, I think I would have died. Also, I have, like, no health, so what am I going to do about that? I'm going to rage. Chat, I think it's dead. I think I'm dead here. Yeah, no, never mind. I got this. Never mind. Why was that so hard? Why was that so hard? Yeah, so after struggling for a couple hours, the second I switched weapons, I beat it? I mean, maybe it was all coincidence. I'd been playing the fight for so long that I did have the muscle memory down, but whatever. Plan's dead, and we gotta keep moving. The dungeon has some new toys, like Ectoplasm, which I'd use to start the Pumpkin Moon event so that I could obtain the Witch's Broom. Finally, we're no longer restricted to the ground, and we're given the gift of flight. And with this gift, I summoned Golem to bash his stupid skull in, but died to this somehow. Uh, okay. I then called it a night there as it was another one of those nine hour streams and I was tired. But a few hours later I kept playing anyway. I decided to go back to the range class by crafting a megalodon and shrew my armor and actually ended up killing him first try. So that was cool I guess. And then I got slammed by Calamitous and her annoying brothers. The next day I was pumped. I only had a few steps between me and the moon lord. I started out by deleting Calamitous an hour and 30 minutes into the stream. I'm very fond of this fight. I think it's really fun. Unfortunately it's very short because she died in like four seconds. Shame. And then I fought Duke Fishron. I don't know if it's just me, but it really doesn't feel like Infernum changed them all that much. He feels more like a Duke Fishron V2 by Neptune, and if you've played GD for a bit, you'd know what I mean. I then took care of Empress of Light, which is another one of my favorite fights in this mod, but unfortunately she's not that important to make a whole montage on. But if you want to see the full fight, along with all the other full fights, check out the video on my second channel in the description or the little corner thing.
There's no way I just did that first fucking try. There's actually no fucking way. The next victim on my rampage was Lunatic Cultist. I wasn't ready for Moonlord yet, but I wanted to get him out of the way just so I didn't need to later. Yeah, we up. We up. We are so up! Dude, this stream has been nothing but back-to-back -back W's, bro. It was a slow start at the beginning, but we up. We are up so much. I swept the solar pillar for a daybreak, and I took that daybreak to burp the space worm and immediately beat his significantly weaker colleague, Ashram Aureus. Easy-ass boss. And to wrap up our killing spree, we end off with the Aquatic Scourge, who like everyone else so far, was easy as hell. It's very apparent that I'm speeding through this section, mainly because I'm very behind schedule with this, but also this part of the game is just a big long boss rush. So is the rest of the game. But we're finally here! Moonlord at last. This fight is honestly really easy. He's got like three attacks in each phase, which makes it seem longer than it actually is. But unlike Golem where he's long and boring, Moonlord is long and fun. I guess? That doesn't excuse this fight from being kind of ass, but at least it's an enjoyable type of ass, as all ass should be. Please, I would like adrenaline. I don't want to get fucked. Yes. Sh movement. No, I don't. Apparently, I've been getting hit this whole time. I know what I'm doing. It's really stupid, but like, I know what I'm kind of doing. No, I don't. Ah, oh, shit. It might be so unbelievably over. Please, 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 See, what I tell you, chat, that wasn't gonna take- that took le way less than an hour. Let's fucking go! Moonlord is gone. Throughout our journey, there were many doubters, claiming I wouldn't come close to Wall of Flesh. Well, look at me now, bitches. Bet you feel really stupid, don't ya? But I can't get ahead of myself, though, as Calamity adds even more content post-Moonlord. Progression would be a good term. Hell would be the correct term. This final section was the most mentally draining aspect of the whole challenge. This is the part of the game where the difficulty spikes massively. These bosses are meant to test every skill you've learned over the course of the game, from flying, dashing, and staying alive. Things that I can't do to an optimal degree. The broom has been a big help, don't get me wrong, but for bosses like Profane Guardians and Providence, it's too slow to survive even the most basic of patterns. The Solar Flare armor is the only armor set that grants us a ram dash, but can only be used three times before needing a recharge. WHY?! And staying alive? Well, I'm just bad. The Profane Guardians took me an unnecessary amount of time. It started off with me just trying to find consistent strategies, but I didn't really get anywhere with that. Then someone in chat suggested rebinding my mount key to my dash key, so I could consistently unmount, dash, and remount, which worked pretty well. I just didn't at the time know about the cooldown, which messed me up for sure, but it wasn't detrimental. Yet. As for anything else movement-wise, that's about it. People in chat kept trying to get me to allow wings, but I wouldn't budge. The first phase was extremely hard to maneuver, so I came up with a way to basically skip it with adrenaline. Adrenaline is a bar added to Calamity that slowly fills up during a boss fight when you aren't getting hit. Upon getting max adrenaline, your damage is briefly boosted by 200%. The only reason I bring this up now at the end of the game is because I never really got adrenaline during this challenge. And even when I did, I'd lose it immediately. But with the profane meatballs, the fight really only begins once I get through this Flappy Bird section and break their wall, with their only attack being to periodically shoot a single laser. So all it took was to bring out my inner Jigglypuff and stall for a bit while wiping out the healer in a few seconds. As for the second and third phases, I just had to thug it out until one of us dropped dead.
Uh, motherfucker, why did it have to be that one? Why did I, why did it, why did it have to be the controversial fucking, like, conversation that got me the win? And now is on to Providence, my favorite boss in this entire mod, and is probably the easiest out of all the post Moonlord bosses. I got pretty far on one of my first attempts, Wait, and after a long while of trolling, I took her out within a few tries. She comes, she comes, she comes, she comes, she comes, she comes. However, it's still not the end. What is happening? What is happening? What is this? This is new. This is new. What am I looking at? What am I looking at? The power of gods? I won! Oh my god, wait, that was so fucking cool. What the fuck? <gasps> Oh my god, thank you, Devourer of Gods. Unfortunately, unfortunately, you're an asshole, so... Easy claps. First try? First try, question mark? And now onto the Sentinels. These guys drop various materials that are used to craft a summoning item for the Devourer of Gods, which makes these assholes mandatory. Or so I thought. But we'll pretend that they are mandatory, because I had the displeasure of sitting through these guys while my friends argue about politics. Sure, we can say America sucks and communism is based and all that shit, but like, also... Yeah. Like, I'm not opposed to communism. So, you're kind of a Sigma. Shut up! No. <laughs> Don't call him that! <laughs> you're a political Sigma. I'm First is the Ceaseless Void fought in the dungeon. He wasn't too bad. He usually doesn't require too much movement, so he went down pretty easily. Next was the Stormweaver fought in space. At first I tried to fight him on foot, but that idea quickly went out the window. I then came up with the idea to use the Shrimpy Truffle in the rain, and just zoom left to right until he died. Which, after a few bad attempts, oh, worked like a charm. Like it's just, it's just, yeah, I feel like... Uh, right now, the, the right is what I would describe as a Christian, yes! reactionary, um, reactionary populist movement. And the last one, Cygnus fought in hell. I hate this guy. This is a fight that required me to have fast movement, but I don't know if you can tell, but I don't have that. I'm sure there is a way to defeat him, but I didn't want to spend another six hours of my life to find it, which luckily for me, that's when I found the alternate crafting recipe for the cosmic worm. So Cygnus, I'm sure you're a great guy, but respectfully, fuck you. It is now Devourer of Gods time, the boss that has the ability to end this entire run. While all bosses prior had a special strategy that made them work out, this one doesn't. There's only one route to beat the Devourer, which is to utilize the Ram Dash ability granted by an accessory. But wait, I've planned this out ahead of time, in the form of the Solar Flare armor, but like I said, it has a cooldown. Devourer of Gods dashes at you 7 times before sending out his lasers. We can only dash 3 times. I tried cheesing with teleports, but each time ended in death. There wasn't anything I could do. This was it. I made it all this way without the use of accessories, and it would be a cosmic death worm from outer space to stop me in my tracks. The run was over. But I didn't want it to end like that. I figured I'd allow myself to use the Elysian Ages. Now I know what you're thinking. Boo, cheater! It's over! People are obsessed with this boss, so I gotta include it, I guess. But even though I did allow this one accessory, it didn't make this fight any easier. In fact, it was still piss difficult, and the chat this stream was just not it. I love you guys, but man, you fucks were so annoying. You beat Dog in three minutes? Well, here's the thing, here's the thing, here's the thing. You had this cool thing called damage accessories, and this cool thing called mobility accessories. You know what I don't have? EITHER OF THOSE!
I hate- I hate that fucking argument like, oh, well, I beat it. Okay? The fuck? The fuck? What do you want me to do about that? I can't do- I can't do what you do. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I can't- I don't- I-, I This fight is not as convenient as you. I, my bad. My bad I'm a fucking retard who thought this would be a funny challenge. My uh, my apologies, OG. I got so tilted to the point I ended stream and continued to grind offline. Doing this got me in a better headspace, and I began popping off. I still died, but every attempt felt less and less like a chore each time, and felt more like progress. And eventually, I got this run. Come on, 3%, 3%, baby. Yes! <gasps> and there we go. To answer the question, no. You can't beat Calamity Infernum without any accessories. You can get pretty dank far, but it would ultimately be the 100th worm boss to stop us. Although I can go along with the rest of the game and treat it like an Anzal G least accessories situation, but this challenge has been a huge test on my mental limit, and I honestly don't think I can go any further. Because I'm shit. If you made it this far and enjoyed the video, please make sure to subscribe. I poured my blood, sweat, and tears into getting this out and I want to try and hit 10k by the time I graduate high school in June. And I also want to thank you all so much for the support in the last few months, and an even bigger thanks for being patient with my horrible upload schedule. However, judging from my history, this kind of gap is nothing, so you new gens better get used to it.